I believe in a higher power. Don't know the name, don't know where it's coming from, don't know anything like that. But I believe that this power, and visualize me real quick. Let's say it's a man up there or a woman, whatever, and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins, born February 17th, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly what you're supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be. You die, you go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay. It's just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says you were supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, Doug, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why, because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, if we don't work, we just, whatever, it's going to magically happen for us. No, I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I want to get up there and say, him, look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't see this. <laughs> I didn't see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this world. And however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me, to look at me and say, I did not. No, I, I had you at 185, I had you at this, but all this other shit, I was riding as you were living it. I want to, I want to find more. All I can. And in that, you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, you're not going to find anything. You're going to live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're going to get there and you might see a chart. And that chart may tell you who the f you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Man, I could have lived a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more. You know, I've been with you for a long way. I, I, the one moment that stands out out of, we've done, I don't know how many done, we've done, what, 800 events. Mm -hmm. The one time was 4 a.m. We yeah. went out to practice at 4 a.m. And that was your idea to do it. But, and I mean, then, you know, all these Nike people are like, no, 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 let's not, let's not do that. And then you're like, let's do it at 4 a.m. So you got security, you got brand marketing, sports marketing, going, no, 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 let's not do it. You're like, let's do it. Because that's your sustenance, right? I mean, it, it, to me, it just makes complete sense. Not to us. But I don't, like, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> See, we, all right. what you, usually, I'm sleeping at 4 a.m. Yeah. You're, you're working out. So well, talk about that. Okay, so if, if, if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight. Right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again. Right? Those are two sessions. Right? Now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four. You go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11. Right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four. And now you're back at it again, you know, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four. Right? And so now you do that. And as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. Is that genetic? 
or is that something you you ingrained and trained yourself? No, it was Who just taught you that. For me, it was just it was just common sense. Like I can I can if I start earlier, I can train more hours. And I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is, right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, it's, it, the gap's just going to widen and widen and widen and widen and widen, and they won't be able to get that back. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Oh, start earlier. Yeah, let's do that. How do you develop that, or where do you where do you learn that from? Well, I, I think it's just you know it's just a matter of what's important to you, mm -hmm. and what's important to you for for whatever reason, you know I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, that's where it comes from for me. I'm addicted to one more. And so I want your mantra going forward to be one more. What does that look like if we're working out? That means when we're in the gym and we say, I'm gonna do five sets of 10, I'm crazy. Like I'm a psycho because I want to win. I want to be somebody. I want to separate. I want to compete. And the way I do that isn't with my giftedness because I wasn't born with a bunch of gifts and I think gifts are crap. I think for the most part, gifted people struggle in life because things come easy to them. I like that things haven't come easy for me in my life. I like they don't have natural talents in every area. And maybe you like that about you too. Maybe you've looked at yourself all your life and thought, man, I don't have that natural beauty or that natural talent or this gift for creativity or intellect or humor. I don't have any of those things. But what I got is I will outwork you. And so at the gym, one of the things I focus on, they say it's five sets of 10. When I'm at 10, I go one more, bam, 11. If I'm running on the treadmill and it's a 45 minute run, I never finish at 45. I always go one more minute, 46. If I'm at the office and I'm supposed to make 25 phone calls that day, when I'm at the end of the day, I always do one more. If I've got meetings, I always do one more. My mantra for three decades in business has been one more. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.